Good morning, and welcome to the worship experience of the Community Church of Poway United Church of Christ. My name is Reverend Greg Davis, and I am blessed to be pastor of this beloved community. And we pray that whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, that you are welcome here. Welcome here to experience love, to experience companionship on the journey, and to just continue in this journey of life, discovering new and exciting things as we move forward during these days. We are going to begin worship this morning by singing a song that I don't think we've sung before, but I really like the way that it talks about we come to worship. We come to this place and we declare to God that we are here to worship. Let's sing together. Happy Sunday, friends. Miss Christy here, sending you your Sunday hugs and hoping that they last all week long. I'm so happy you could be here for the children's time. Today's message is going to come from the book of Philippians in our Bibles in the New Testament. I'm going to talk to you about six verses of this message, and the message is from Paul. Paul's at it again. Paul loves his friends so much that he's writing them a letter to tell them how to do what is best. Six verses full of such great advice. 
one of the things Paul teaches us about is prayer. And I know that we can have so many things answered by our prayers. So we always need to tell God about everything and talk to God about anything you want. Not to worry about anything because God is watching over us. Paul also says that we should think only about good things. And why? Is because when you have good things in your heart, you are good to others. When you also have that good in your heart, if you were to wake up in the morning and say, I don't want to eat my oatmeal. I don't like that outfit. That shirt with those stripes, it's just don't like it. Oh, do I have to do school? When we wake up with that yucky in our heart, that yucky in our minds, it's not a good day. But if we were to wake up with, oh, I love oatmeal. It gives me great energy. And that striped shirt, it's so beautiful. I love that shirt. And I'm so fortunate I get to learn Wow, if we wake up with that and have good stuff in our minds, then we're ready for a good day. But I want to tell you one other thing that Paul talked about in those six short verses. He talked about being joyful. And I forgot to tell you, but Paul was writing this letter from prison. What is he, crazy? Be joyful? Paul was joyful. And he's trying to teach us to be joyful always. Not happy, like when you get a new pair of shoes or you get a new toys, but joyful, that feeling that comes from deep inside, that you can't sit still kind of feeling, that the joy that comes from loving God and that stand up and shout hallelujah or the stand up and sing praises. When our joy comes from God, it can't be stopped. And we should always be joyful too because we are God's pride and joy. We get to spend time with God every day, and we are so happy that we can do that. When people see that joy that comes from deep down in here, from loving God, people will look at us and say, hey, I want what she's got. So that's an important message that Paul gave to his friends. But I want to tell you one other real quick thing. Today, when I was reading a story, I, it's called Pete the Cat. And I love my white shoes. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is what Paul's talking about. I'm just going to read you a couple little short parts of it just to, so you can understand what I'm trying to tell you about him. But Pete the cat got a new pair of white shoes. And he loves his white shoes. So Pete the cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much that he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. But, oh no! Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Well, it turned his shoes red. But did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. And the story goes on, and Pete steps in many different colors. But Pete doesn't cry. He goes along singing his song as joyful as he can be. I, I never realized all this time I've been reading Pete the Cat that he, he has the love of Jesus in his heart, too. That he has that joy that comes from loving God in his heart. I'm never going to think the same thing about Pete the Cat again. I, I, I'm so excited. So from now on, whenever I read this story, I'm going to know that Pete has joy that comes from God deep down inside. So I want you to have that same kind of joy this week. So let's celebrate God every day. I mean, wake up and get out of bed and say, good morning, God. I'm so glad that you're with me today. I'm so glad I get to spend the day with you. Let's go have a joyful day. And God, you make me joyful. 
So this week, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. So you can walk around like pink Pete the Cuts, but you could sing, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. God bless. I love you. Bye. Good morning, everyone. Have you ever worried about anything? And then do you worry about what you need to do? This passage may help you. It is from Philippians 4, verse 1, then verse 4 through 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May this reading help you in your path today. So it was the year that The Odd Couple with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman premiered on tel television. It was also the year that my favorite soap opera, All My Children, premiered on TV. It was the year of the very first Earth Day celebration. It was the year where cigarette commercials were banned on TV. Monday Night Football became a regular thing for all of us in our households. And cars, well, let's see. The Chevy Vega came on the market. The Ford Pinto came out of the corral and the second generation of the Chevy Camaro appeared. Any idea what year I'm talking about? If you answered out there 1970, then you are right. But there was also another very important event that happened in 1970. Indeed, there was a man named William Zimmerman, and William Zimmerman applied for a very special patent, and that patent was for refrigerator magnets. <laughs> I know it's hard to imagine, isn't it? That we have been blessed with refrigerator magnets for 50 some odd years. And in Oklahoma, we always said icebox magnets. <laughs> but I have favorite ones, and I have a couple I wanna show you today. This is one of my favorite magnets. You know I love dachshunds. Best friends forever. <laughs> Good days start with coffee and Jesus. <laughs> People are crazy. Be the change you wish to see in the world. And my all time favorite. Jesus had two dads and he turned out okay. I know you must all have your favorite refrigerator magnets. Now, the little confession here, I have a stainless steel refrigerator, and my magnets will not stick to the front of the refrigerator, so my magnets have been relegated, relegated excuse me, to the side of the washer or the clothes dryer. But the best part is they never get old, right? They are these 
catchy phrases, funny pictures that stick with us. You know, there's a man in Henderson, Nevada. He holds the Guinness Book of World Records for refrigerator magnets, over 40,000 as of 2020. And better yet, I know some of you are gonna jump on this opportunity. For the mere cost of $538, you can get a special magnetic device so that you can have your iPad on your refrigerator. Mm, Go get them. But our scripture this morning makes me think of refrigerator magnets. Philippians, this little short book, this short letter of Paul to this church at Philippi, 104 verses, and depending on the font size in your Bible and the translation you use, it's basically about two and a half to three pages long. But oh, is it jam packed with refrigerator magnets. Powerful, powerful letter. And if we were to name one characteristic of this letter, one word that sums up the entire letter, that word would be joy. Amazing, amazing to think that these joyful words were written about 70 years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And these words were written by Paul from prison in Rome. These words were written after a time of deep persecution for Paul, being left for dead several times. And what is such a blessing is that Paul is continuing to write about his undiminished joy. We read early on, chapter 1, verse 4, Paul constantly, Paul says, I am constantly praying for you with joy. Chapter 1, verse 25, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in faith. Chapter 2, verse 2, Paul pleads with the people to make his joy complete. Chapter 4, verse 1, therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love and desire, my joy and my crown. And then we approach verse four of chapter four, part of what Pastor Debbie read this morning. And I get a sense once again, of first century refrigerator magnets, little conspicuously placed statements, ideas, ways to live, ways to have that joy in your life. Listen again to our passage. From Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing these things that you have learned and received and heard, and the peace of God will be with you. Isn't it amazing in such a short space, a short book that we have so many life reminders. Verses four through nine, completely chocked full of them. The past five weeks, the Wednesday evening Bible study, we have been studying the book of Galatians. And one of the recurring tasks that we had was that we always looked for, we would categorize, excuse me, we'd categorize verses as either timeless truths, the gospel of grace, cultural norms, personal opinions, or random texts. And through this process, we were able to have a little more clear understanding of Paul's intention as he was writing certain passages. And we also were able to look at these passages for ourselves, for our personal life, and be able to say, is that a timeless truth for my life? 
It's a great way to look at letters from Paul. So many conflicting, it seems, messages come out of Paul, but when we look at it this way and we look at the context, we begin to see the real meaning. And in these words, so succinctly written, rejoice in the Lord, let your gentleness be known. God is near. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Keep your mind and focused on truth, honor, justice, and purity. And I would add to that list, something that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, that whatever you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks. How great would it be to have these verses, these proclamations on little fridge magnets, excuse me, fridge magnets. I can't say that word very well. In these days, actually today is 30 weeks, 30 weeks that we have been worshiping online, physically distant. And I believe that it is these kind of fridge magnets that carry us through. I can tell you that there are some days that I wake up and I'm not even sure what day it is. I jump into it saying, well, it's a same old, same old, just a different day, just not sure what one it is. I sometimes have to check the calendar. And for a pastor, Sundays are very central to our life. Well, all of a sudden, because I record my sermons on Thursday, Sundays have lost their centrality for me. And it is when I look back and I look at the promises of God, I look at statements like these, that I know that this is passing, this will get better, and that we continue to be God's faithful people in every way that we can. Several months ago, I posted a music video on our church Facebook page. It's by a British rock Christian band called For King and Country. And the title of that song was I Choose Joy. Listen to the words of this song. Lately, I've been reading, watching the nightly news. Don't seem to find the rhythm. Just want to sing the blues. Feels like the song is never going to stop. Feels like it's never going to stop. Got to get that fire back in my bones before my heart turns into stone. Somebody please pass the megaphone. I want to shout it from the mountaintops. One, two, three. Oh, hear my prayer tonight. I'm singing to the sky. Give me strength to raise my voice. Let me testify. Oh, hear my prayer tonight. Because this is do or die. The time has come to make a choice. And I choose joy. But I think this passage from Philippians and this song are saying is this. With everything that we are going through as a people, as a country, as a world, COVID-19, racial unrest, the death of a beloved Supreme Court justice, so-called Christian pastors saying that they prayed for the death of RBG, questionable law enforcement tactics, name calling and disrespect from people at the highest parts of our government, protests in the streets that often turn violent. I wonder, is there a risk? Is there a risk that we will never experience the joy that Paul talks about. Indeed, we need to get the fire back in our bones before our hearts turn into stone. We need to make known to everyone around us and more importantly, we need to remind ourselves of the joy that we seek. You see, the joy we seek, the joy that we desperately need and the joy we claim we can achieve 
does not lie in the resolution of any circumstance, especially the ones I just mentioned. You see, we could have a safe vaccine, vaccine tomorrow. We'll be happy. But that's, that's not the joy that Christ can give. By some miracle, racial injustice will go away. We might be happy, but still, I will say, that is not the kind of joy that God desires for us. The Supreme Court might be completely flipped, and you might be happy about it, or you might be sorrowful. But still, that is not about the joy that Paul talks about. Our choice for president can win, and still, not joy. You can completely stop watching news on every single network and you will not obtain joy. So how are you going to get the joy back? Where is your joy this morning? Do you have joy? Our external situations in life sometimes keep us from God's indescribable joy, Paul's undiminished joy. And I wonder today, what are those things that you are holding on to so tightly that's preventing joy from seeping into your soul? Only you can answer that question. But as an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ, I can declare to you that joy is ours because we worship and serve a God who saves, a God who loves us without condition, a God who allows us and supports us at being God's church, a God who walks through every valley of death's shadow. A God who, as we read in Zephaniah 317, spins wildly around thinking about us, singing joy over us. Joy. I experience joy every Tuesday. Bob and Sylvia Shelley, they come into the church, they collect the food out of the care can, they rearrange the food pantry. They refill all of the food boxes on our campus. I experience joy when I am able to sit and hold and wrap myself in a quilt that has been made with love by the people of this church. I experience joy being at church council meetings, trustee meetings, hearing the laughter and seeing the love and concern for this thing, this community, Church of Poway, that we love so much. And I experience joy every Thursday when I look beyond this camera and see Jeff Wield, who gives hours and hours of his time to make sure that worship happens. Just this past week, I felt joy in a very interesting situation. In fact, the situation was rather sad one of our church members was walking with a friend that she had not seen for a long time. And this church member was talking about, oh, things are going so great at our church, even though we can't be together. We have a new pastor who's married to a great guy named Freddie. Well, wait, 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 what, what? Your pastor's gay? Yeah, it's awesome. Well, that, that can't be. The Bible clearly says that he is an abomination. So the joy that I felt was this dear person coming to my defense, coming to the defense of our church. I'm proud of that person. And like I say, in a weird way, I have a sense of joy. Choose joy. The joys that we experienced in 1970, 
not joy, but the joys that we can experience in 2020, in 2021 looking forward, with God at the helm, permeating our hearts with love and grace and acceptance. That's very real joy. We are all continuing to search, and I want to encourage you, keep searching for that joy, because it's there. I encourage you this week to take an inventory of your life. Find where that joy resides. Think about the things that you do or are doing when that joy comes into view. Read your joyful reminders in Scripture. And as you monitor your joys, I encourage you then to pray and to sit and listen to God. And just maybe, maybe you will realize that the joy that you have is there when you are doing something for someone else. It's amazing how it works. Joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known. God is near. Don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Keep your mind focused on truth, honor, justice, and purity. Always giving thanks for everything you do. There is joy to be had. It's found in service. It's found in dedication. And that joy is one of the best gifts of grace that God has to offer us. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for this passage of scripture. And Lord, today, this, this sermon, this message has been so much lighter than what we discussed last week. But I do believe that there is so much truth to be had as we understand joy, as we see that joy and happiness are different things, that joy can be found even in a time of disappointment and sadness. I thank you for this place. I thank you for the leaders in this church I thank you for all of our online worshipers and what they have come to mean to us. And together, dear God, we come to you today. A people from all different places searching for joy and praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the and glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing that in our search for joy, in looking at the refrigerator magnets of our life, that one of the components that can bring that joy, that can be a start of that joy, is celebrating this beautiful meal together. It was a quiet night and Jesus was with his, his disciples, his very best. They had been eating and drinking, celebrating, rejoicing at Passover. And then Jesus kind of changed it a bit, made it all about himself. And he took bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks and he blessed it. And he said to his disciples, take and eat. This 
is my body. This is the substance of who I am. When you eat it together in community, you remember and strengthen me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and after he blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the blood of the new covenant. My blood, my seal of approval, my force of life that can be your force of life. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink in remembrance of me. And when you do know that you are strengthening your search for joy. And they did all eat. And they drank. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you for these elements. We thank you for the presence that we feel when we eat these elements together. And we thank you that these elements can be the beginning of joy for us. Help us remember this phrase. Remember me. Thank you for this bread and cup of joy. Amen. What a joy it is to be a part of this beloved community, the joy that we have in being together even when we are physically distant, the joy that we have in serving one another, the joy that we have in serving the needs of this community of Poway, and part of the joy that we have as seekers and followers of Jesus is giving of ourselves, giving our time, the joy of giving our talents and the joy of giving our resources. It has been a challenging summer for us financially. There is still so much ministry happening on this corner. As I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, part of the money that's coming in is helping us so that we can have real cable and we can live stream worship from our sanctuary. So as we close out today with the final song, Shout to the Lord, remembering the promises of God, there will be a banner at the bottom. I encourage you to click on that banner. It gives you an easy way to do an online donation. You can also always mail in your online donation, but know that you are loved and that ministry is happening. And we are preparing for a great day when we return together so beloved, remember, God has no hands but our hands, no feet but our feet, and no face but our face. And I would add this morning that the joy that we have, the joy that we are searching for is available to us. Even though our circumstances might be rough, God's joy and completeness is there as we serve one another. I pray this in the name of the Father, the Mother, the Creator of us all, the love and forgiveness and companionship of our friend Jesus, and in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. See you next week.